Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris on our final day aboard the fall retreat at sea off the New England coast. Revolution sprang from these shores 250 years ago. Civil war erupted within these shores 160 years ago. And many citizens are thinking civil war is on the way again. Those are the findings of two recent polls that say a large plurality of Americans believe Americans will be killing each other within 10 years. A Zogby poll puts the number at 46%. A YouGov Economist poll puts it at 43%. In neither poll did more Americans think there would not be a civil war. Those are trend lines that have ratcheted up considerably in the past decade. Interestingly, even the left, the commies, are beginning to comment on all of this in agreement that, yes, civil war is a distinct possibility in the foreseeable future. Of course, they blame it on an overreaction by one of their favorite bogeymen, Christian nationalists, whatever that means exactly. The calm, progressive, mild-mannered states, well, they're the victims, while the mean, religious, gun-toting crazies, well, wait, they'd be the villains. Whatever you might think about the possibility of a civil war, it is extremely telling that almost half, half of Americans think the likelihood of it happening is pretty darn good. Why would so many Americans think civil war is possible, even likely? Well, the commies venture a guess that since we are losing, that we will resort to violence more readily and quickly. But what they don't seriously address is why so many Americans think the country is being lost. See, for communists, children being killed in the womb or sexually transitioned or taught perversion in the schools, that's all perfectly normal. And to think otherwise or oppose it makes you a bigot or a homophobe or a racist or a white nationalist or you know, pick your poison. The irony is completely lost on them that the very act of labeling normal people as all that is is normal, well, people are sick of that. In short, the commies have pushed too far and people are done. They've had enough. Does there have to be an actual war to reverse things back to how they were? And by how they were, what we mean is you don't have to worry about the FBI kicking in your door because you're pro-life or the Justice Department labeling you a terrorist threat because you are a faithful Catholic or spying on you at mass. You can choose to not go along with the prevailing culture of perversion and not be canceled. You can speak from your traditional religious convictions and not worry about government and big tech coming after you or cutting off your bank account or shutting off your car or whatever. The bottom line is that huge numbers of Americans are looking down the road, just a short distance down the road, and asking, where does this all end? And a huge number of them are answering that question it ends at the end of a gun barrel. Right or wrong, necessary or not, as long as the commies keep pushing, the scales are gonna keep tipping. No war ever just starts out of the blue. There are always precipitating factors and multiple dynamics that prepare the way for it. The only thing commies and Christians seem to agree on today is many of the necessary factors and dynamics are falling into place more and more and all of this is on the eve of what may be the most hotly contested election in U.S. history, a history that began in violence right here on these shores. Wrapping up our autumn retreat at sea off the coast of New England, this is Michael Voris for Church Militant. God love you.